All right, so today we're gonna learn how to make plates. So as I told you just a second ago, plates are slightly different. It's just, there's some slightly different moves, especially because we're trying to flatten out the clay a lot, right? Where you, instead of trying to go up with the clay, you're trying to go wide with the clay, and then it has a short little raised part at the edge. So in a lot of ways, it's kind of opposite of making a cylinder or something, right? Because almost every other thing we make in when we're on the wheel, it's all cylinder. You can, if you can throw a good cylinder, you can make a good cup, you can make a good vase, you can make a good pitcher right it can get pushed out and bellied out into like a roundish form but plates are mainly flat whoop, and that's where a lot of the work goes in whoop, and then it ends up really wide and so because it's really wide that circumference the way around there's much more distance so each revolution of the wheel is really whipping around right it's that amount of clay passing through your fingers when you're trying to raise that short little cylinder for the plate is really going around at a high velocity right and so you got to slow your wheel down a lot so the good thing about this is when you're working with these this plate you can use soft clay so what i used to do when i knew i was going to make plates i would throw and you know how some things just don't work out i would take all that goopy clay wedge it up a little and just throw it in a bag and i wouldn't use it and i'd collect all the goopyish clay that i had and then make those in the plates because the clay you can smash it out so you can use wetter clay for this and it's actually better because it makes it easier to center, easier to smash out if the clay is a little wet because it doesn't need to really stand up that tall. So here we go. So this is a five pound ball of clay. This right here is a 12 inch bat. So I usually make these out of four pounds and that's okay too. And four pounds tends to be for beginners not quite enough clay and it tends to be end up really thin. So I'm gonna try it with five pounds today and, and then we'll talk about things as we go. But plate um, are really super useful right and it's really fun to kind of make and it kind of expands your thing your thing uh, always have to throw these I always throw these on a bat right and make sure your bat is level right so you see sometimes the bat especially where the pins where the pins are, the wheel pins, the wheel head pins are, sometimes the bat doesn't seat well and you have to kind of make sure. So make sure it is level, not one side of the bat is like oscillating around like that. All right, so this goes in the middle, push it down really good. I can already tell like this is just a little bit too much clay for what I want to do, right? So this is a five pound um, piece of clay. So everyone asks me how much clay do you need, right? This is a 12 inch bat this plate will actually probably end up hanging over the edge of the bat that makes sense when i'm done with it so the base will be still on the bat but the rim when i fold the rim down will be hanging out now think about the width the circumference of the your cabinets right if most of us or at least i do in my family my plates are above the kitchen counter meaning in the cabinets above not in the below because it's easier for me and my family to actually access that area like the stuff below the kitchen counter is much deeper and so you put bigger stuff down there right so for me i we put all the kitchen like the things we use the most cups and plates bowls above the counter in here where we are because the dimensions of the plywood that's probably only it probably is less than 12 inches deep that makes sense so in order to keep plates up there, they have to be less than 12 inches. 11 is safer because when they mill the plywood, they end up chopping a chunk off, right? So if you make an 11 inch plate, that's probably okay. And then take a serious look when you go home, how big are the plates that you actually use, right? We're here in ceramics, a lot of times we're infatuated by bigger is better, thinner is better, lighter is better. There are all these things we're trying to do as become better skill wise, but maybe bigger is not better. Maybe a 10 inch plate is what you really use a lot at home, right? Because it fits the size, it fits where it needs to go, all that, right? And it works the best in your life. So maybe if you really only need a 10 inch plate, how big do you think you need to make it? It's gonna shrink about maybe for this clay, 11 to 12%. So if you make like a 12, 12 and a half inch plate, then that plate will end up shrinking down at least to 11, something or 10 something 
then that ends up being a really good size for usability and it doesn't take up as much real estate everywhere it goes, meaning in the dishwasher, in your sink, in your cabinets. If you make a third, if your plate ends up being 13 inches wide, once you glaze and fire, it has to go usually here below, right? The counter, cause that's the deep. And just for me, that's harder space to access, right? There's a whole bunch of other stuff we pile in there and it's not as quick to get in and out. The dishwashers, man, it just doesn't really fit well on our dishwasher either, right? So, um, or on the dish rack. So here, on the center, the so thing about what you want, because it's so big, this is gonna be, end up being so wide, you have to account for shrinkage, where when you're making a little cup, you don't really notice that it shrinks like a quarter inch or half inch or whatever, but this plate is gonna shrink an inch. That's really noticeable. All right, so here we go. Um, this is a slightly bigger piece of clay than what maybe you're used to working with. So go slower, right? As you raise up and go down and then push back down, right? So go slower when you're using more clay, right? Go up and then I squeeze hard and go slow as I go up and then back down. Let's push this camera back a little because we don't really need to see the bottom. There we go. Hey. All right, so push back down. Oh. So I'm using a lot of force here because I know how to apply it, right? And we'll talk about later about how to center bigger, bigger chunks of clay than even this, right? So I'm using a five pound ball of clay, right? So it's almost there. I'll just center it one more time. I think I'll have it here in a second. There we go, raising up. All right, so, so far everything's the same, right? It's just a bigger piece of clay, right? And if five pounds is too much for you, right? You could start with a little bit less, four or three, right? Uh, point is like, there's just a certain steps. Now this is where we start trying to figure out what we're gonna do, right? So everybody, when I look at this ball of clay, right? This ball of clay has a long ways to go. It needs to be out here. The edge of it needs to come out near the edge of the bat and it's nowhere close, right? So this is something we normally don't worry about is how making this a lot wider. So here, I'm just gonna compress it down like I normally would. You see that there? I'm just pushing, 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 pushing pushing, pushing to get that ball of clay more controlled and like that, not as cone tall. So now I still got to widen this out. So there's a lot of goopy clay that comes off on your hands, especially if you're just starting. Don't worry about that. When you make plates, a lot of goopiness is going to come off. Now I have to squash this down and make it wider. So I, this is going to be a problem because how do we really do that? So what I'm going to do here is push down from the top like that, and then add some compression from the side like that that right why do i well let's not do the compression from the side you see if i just push down from the top what happens and you can see it already starting to happen you see how this outside here is getting what is wider than the underneath part and i call that kind of mushrooming right and this could lead to a big weird crack in the plate why it's because if i just keep doing this mushroom push down thing that mushroomy thing this outside of this little bit of clay could end up touching the bat before the inside part right and so that outside part will curl down and touch first and leave either an air gap between the base of the clay and the new outside of the clay or it could trap a bunch of wet wet soft clay in there and that could lead to semi-circular cracks right and so you don't want to let the outside of this touch first so what i'm going to do here is add some pressure now from the outside like that so you see i'm pushing in and you see how i got rid of that mushrooming and so i'm going to do now two things at the same time i'm going to push in with my left hand up here and i'm going to push down from the top like normal right and so i'm doing both things at the same time boom like that and you see i'm linking my hands together right so push push together together and i'm trying to make sure that these two fingers down here are running along this far side edge you see that it's going to be over here so it's out of the camera view but i'll put it over here these are running along the edge so i can kind of feel what this is doing right if i can feel that this is folding over right i'm not really pushing too hard with this right i am pushing more with this part of my hand 
there, but these hand fingers are wrapped around, just feeling what this little wider chunk is doing. Because if I feel that wider chunk starting to drop down to the wheel head, I will add more pressure from my palm area, right? If I use too much pressure here with my fingers, they'll end up digging into the clay and they dive into the clay and may have make a big hole, right? So watch this. So I'll just push from this side. Let's go top. So I'll push from this side and I'm just pushing Pushing that, compressing that that bead. So you see how that got smoother there, right? So you see how that I got rid of that by pushing in mainly from here. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna do two things at the same time. I'm gonna push down and in like this. So here we go. Now, if it feels like the, this part is getting wider, right, too fast, it's gonna touch. I just use more in inward pressure from my left hand, right? I could just do that for a while and then I push more down and you see how the clay slowly just starts expanding out because I'm pushing down and I'm pushing a little bit in, right? But I want it to grow, right? So I'm not pushing from the outside trying to make it go in like crazy. I'm just pushing it in enough to keep this bead of clay from folding over, right? Onto the bat. Right, so I'll keep going. So sometimes it's easier. So this is kind of flat here. Sometimes it's easier if it kind of has a dome shape. So I'll dome it by just, so instead of just pushing down here in the middle, I'm gonna push out here a little bit now. Then I'll add some push here from here down. You see that? There we go. And you see how it's starting to get wider. I'm using more force now. And then, so it, I think it's easier. And then once I kind of establish that dome, I'll push the middle down a little bit like that. And then I will keep going down, down, down. I kind of switch hand position. Let's go back to this. So you're probably thinking, how much clay do I need to leave behind? That really depends. And you see how much stuff comes off on my hands, right? So how much clay do I need to leave behind before I start doing it? It depends on a lot of different things. Meaning if you want a really flat plate, right? That's really flat when it's folded down. Like, cause some plates are almost like a little slab of clay with a little turn up, right? Then this could be thinner than this. If you want a plate that's gonna end up really deep, right you can leave it thicker like this right and then even as you pull back you can make a plate that has a kind of curved bottom right that's kind of rounded then you would definitely need to leave this height here right because as i pull back on my plate as i open i will slowly raise up as i open that makes sense to everybody why because i need to establish that curve for now right if I want a slightly curved plate. But most people, when they think of plate, they want something that's really flat and then a rim that's pretty low will go for that, right? Why is that? Like, cause there are certain times when you want a plate that has higher rim or has a curve, especially if it's something that you want on a plate, but it's gonna have sauce on it or something, right? If it's like a very liquidy sauce that's with the food, right? As you walk around, if it's a really flat open plate, that sauce is just gonna end up spilling on the floor so sometimes a plate has a higher rim to it now other times a plate can be really flat because let's say you're eating like a steak and you have a steak knife right it's hard to go at it at a from a higher elevation right the steak knife is going to be pretty flat so you need a lower rim right so you're not grinding away on the rim so this one's gonna be flat, so let's just push this down. So here, I'll start from the rim again. So this is ready to go if I wanted to make something that was taller. So let's just push this down more, and I'm gonna add some pressure here from the side as well still. There we go. So you see how it's starting out a little wider. I'll do it one more time. There we go. So we're just gonna leave it like that. All right, so, so now we see that we have this big wide thing. Scrape off any loose goopy stuff. So you see that I've been doing that the whole time. There's all gonna be, a, especially if you were gonna make a bigger plate and you're not that experienced at making bigger things like this, you're gonna get a lot of loosey goop stuff coming off. Don't get worried. For some reason, when you throw bigger pieces of clay like this and plates are especially goopy for some reason, right? So don't worry about that. So 
now there are if you look up how to make plates online throw there's a lot of different techniques out there right what i do is and the way i teach it is i try to use the skills that we already have the way we already teach how to throw so just like before i'm just going to open this like normal like this push down now with the consideration that i leave more clay here thickness i don't go down as deep as i normally would why is that well one reason especially is that when we wire this baby off i come through with the wire this wire it has a much bigger distance to cut through right this is much wider than normal so that wire has a tendency to bow upwards in the middle and leave more clay no matter how tight i try to hold it it just leaves more clay behind on the back it just cuts upwards so you one you have to leave more clay here Right, and that's the main reason why. Now, as you get bigger, like if you're gonna make a two foot platter, it really leaves some, that wire really tends to bow up in the middle. So that's the one thing. Also, it's just nice because plates your people aren't as concerned about lightness with plates because plates like a coffee cup has a handle right and it's really designed to be walked around even the drink out of a coffee cup you can you have to lift it and put it on your mouth right and a plate you never really lift it and use it at as a carry, I, like you may put food on and carry it to the table, but after that it's done, it just sits there, right? So I think that weight and lightness is not the first concern with these, where a cup, you wanna show off your ability a little bit, like how thin can we make it sometimes? Plate is not as much, so I'm not as worried about it. So I'm gonna stab it and check thickness. Oh, I think it just feels thin. So it's a little bit thin, I wasn't, I was, I guess I was too busy talking to you guys. So let's talk about a trick on how we fix that. So how do we fix that? So what I'm gonna do here, we'll get super close, cause this is a little trick I do sometimes. So I, I, so if this were a cup, I could live with that thickness. So let's go again here and let's stab it just so camera's close now, right? It's way thicker than my pinky. You see that? That's not good. Like I love it at pinky thickness or more. So what I'm gonna do here is when I open, I'm gonna not open at this level here. I'm gonna raise up a little bit and then pull back and I'll leave like a shallow spot right in the middle. So watch this. So instead of opening at that level, I'm gonna purposely raise up a little and then go back. And then you can see here, I've already see how I'm leaving that as a shallow spot. Now, is this the best, absolutely best thing to be doing? No, right? It's better if you could just make it the right thickness right away. And you see that I'm being really careful. You see how that's still a shallow spot. Let's clean up the water so you guys can see, right? You see that's still a shallow spot and I'm going higher, right? And then when I come back and smooth, that clay should push back into the middle. All right, so I'll fix that, this part in a little bit maybe we'll fix it right now so i'll clean up some of this water right here right and then then i'm going to push some clay back into the middle let's see if we can do it without the sponge i usually would do it with the sponge so you see i'm pushing a chunk of clay back in the middle i make sure that this is mostly dry because i don't want to trap water because i'm clay is getting pushed back over that and i don't want this to be all goopy and wet because then that wet clay could get trapped under the clay that's being pushed over it right so here i'm pushing that back over and then you see how it will establish it that area to be just a thicker spot now once again that's not the best thing in the world to be doing but this, it was that or give up and re-wedge and we're not going to do that and so sometimes i actually like having it happen now as i open that you will notice that there's a chunk of clay here coming that's folding over here you see that there's a chunk of clay that's rising up here you see that that always happens for me so what do i do if i don't take care of that now that piece of clay will come off because as i open they'll keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then this wetter clay will get a film of wet clay between that clay and this harder clay and that ring will come off so every once in a while i have to take my sponge here and kind of push that clay back down i also add some pressure here from the side because i don't want this wet clay too much to get trapped under there so i will hold my fingers here on the side and i push that down like that you see that and that marries that clay back down and then i will keep going so i was throwing a lot without too much water but i'll go back to putting water back on 
So I open, open, being steady, being steady, going slowly, right? So go slowly, don't go fast. You don't have to go fast. So you see how that starts rising up again. I will go back here and I'll do the same move. I'll push that back down, right? So sometimes I will stop here, especially if this is looking really rough right now, I will go back and smooth this out just to make sure that it's looking pretty good, right? I'm just using my, so oh, it's looking pretty good. So I'll come back here. Sometimes I'll do both of these at the same time. How do I do this? So I'll actually push back, pull back with my off hand, my left hand, and then use this hand to push down at the same time. Now, as I get wider, this clay is really whipping around, right? So a smaller cylinder, when it goes around, you only have a little bit of clay going around. So, ooh, let's do that, right? So my finger, smaller cylinder, right? So that is going around. So there's not that much clay going around, but if I go and have double that, right, to make that, and now I'm using two hands to make a larger circle, right? There is definitely more material there going through my fingers as I'm raising, throwing, widening, right? So if you go too fast, you have, you'll lose control, right? So smaller things, the smaller chunk of clay you start with, the smaller the circumference, the faster your wheel head can go. The bigger the chunk of clay that you start with or the wider it gets, the slower your wheel speed needs to be, right? It's just a control thing, makes it easier on you. Oh, I don't know, we'll check on it. Well, let's check, good question. Right, I, I wasn't worried about it, so I didn't check. So here we'll stab it in, check. So you see how it's back to like pinky thickness. I even wish it was a little bit thicker than that. So um, if I were really working, I would have checked right away. So here, right? Yeah, so uh, there, so I'll go back to that move and then pull back. So I'm just doing the same thing that I would normally do with my regular hand, except pulling back with my off hand. And it's just something I trained myself to do. I got tired of so here, a lot of goopy clay may come off, so make sure to start degooping. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna come back and start smoothing this out. So, right, so go slow, and I'm just gonna do it by hand here first. There we go, looking pretty good. And you just try to make this as flat as possible, as the best you can. Right, with the understanding that we're all slightly flawed people, right? You just do the best that you can, right? All right, so that's looking pretty good. And then what you'll do is I haven't finished the rim yet, right? But I wanna really come through and rib this a little bit, right, before I do that. So here I wanna do this, right, and then just rib. So this is lucky enough that it looks like this rib can kind of fit in here. Maybe if I pull this back a little bit, it'll fit in a little better. So I can use just the flat part of this rib, right, like that. And then if you look over there, right, we have different sizes, so you may need a smaller version of this. Like this plate's pretty big, but look how beautiful that's starting to look. It's looking really gorgeous in there already. Uh, the one thing that always is they need to watch out for is that as you're ribbing, you can't have the rib cross over the middle because if I cross over the side, it, this rib will start digging down and that's not the best thing in the world. So you gotta be really watchful and not cross over. So as a teacher, I'm thinking about maybe I should cross over just to show you how to fix it. But I think I already showed you of how to fix up one mess on this today. So you just, so let's say you do make a gouge on there. You just take some, some cl extra clay some just from somewhere and just patch it in there and smooth it over, right? If that does happen, that makes sense to everybody? Same being super watchful. I'm not using too much pressure, right? Light on the pressure. So one thing that I, you can't see when you're doing is like, how hard is John pushing? And then my teacher, when I was learning in undergrad was say, push, you gotta really compress them, really compress them. So I was like, what, a 20 year old? So I was like, yeah, 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 really compress it. So I was just sitting there really muscling it in there and I was getting these, the clay was way over compressed. So take it easy, it's just like the less than the weight of your arm, right? Oh, it starts doing weird things. It starts getting more compressed in certain areas and you can't uncompress, it ends up being strange, right? Uh, it led to, you can't even trim it flat because the clay, it was really weird. I, I can't even really describe it. Because, no, take it easy. 
right? It could lead to all, like you start physically changing the property of the clay a little bit. All right, so I'm coming back here and I'm smoothing this out, right? Just trying to prep this for a short raise. Now, this is the clay here that I get to raise and make into the anything that's apart from this. Now, I have to think a little bit about what's gonna happen here, right? So I have this amount of thickness, right? I can do all sorts of things. Like I can still push straight out. Like I have to thin this baby out some, right? And that means that there's some clay here that will end up going vertical and to be the rim. All that stuff is gonna be hanging out in open space if I fold it down. I also have to think about how I'm gonna transition this curve, right? So if I'm gonna try to make this look really, go out really far, instead I could start that curve here, right? Start curving up, like, I could just keep pushing straight in here and pushing the f this flattish surface out more, out to close to out here, right? And then I could start the rim. But then if I really wanna fold it down, there's a lot of rim hanging out in open space. I can start that transition right here by, if I want to. Now, if you're a really good thrower, there are people who are really good throwers that can do that. Can, I'm going to start, instead of throwing, starting way down here, I'm going to raise up a little bit and start throwing and thinning it out. You'll see it here in a second, so what I'm trying to do. So here, I'm going to start raising. Instead of raising way down here, I'm going to raise up a little and start that raise just up a little higher. So that curve, that turn is always going to start there. Why? Because that way that curve can be really flat right and then it but it's still supported by the outside clay right that makes sense so that area won't collapse and that's one way i can trick the clay into having this large overhang because i'll come back later and trim back under that that makes sense so it's a one way you can kind of make make it Let's just let me finish this raise and I'll I'll explain. So you see how that curve that was originally the place was right there and I'm starting that curve there. Right. So as I'm throwing it, but that clay is still supported all the way out to here still right all the way out to there. So no matter what I do, it's not going to collapse there. Right. One thing I could have done, the other alternative thing is I could have kept pushing this flat out when I'm raising, just like when we do cups, right? We keep thinning it out. But since I want to start making this turn way inside here, I just start raising. So it'll be thicker down here, right? Thicker and it'll get thinner as it goes up. So that's a conscious choice that I'm making. I'm gonna go with, so I usually don't throw with a rib on the outside, but this clay is so goopy and different things are going on. So there, I'm just throwing this up and out. I gotta remember to go slow, right? I was going way too fast there a second ago. All right, so you see, so you see how I'm starting to throw this up and out. So you definitely need to throw this up and out because if you throw this as a cylinder, when you fold it out, Right, if you fold it out at the end, this edge gets really thin a lot of times and weak. So I like kind of throwing it like we do a bowl, how we go up and out, up and out. So I'm seeing, I'm going outward as I throw, right? And then you got, once again, you got to keep your wheel speed low because there's also this force, right? It's just like a merry-go-round, you know, like in a merry-go-round. And then there's always that big kid that came along and tried to spin you really fast. And the only way to stay in the merry-go-round is to stay in the middle, because as you get out further, right, there's more of that force trying to throw you. You're going really fast out on the edge, right, when that big kid gets on there and really starts. So same thing with this, right? This is getting really wide. So if you increase your wheel speed too much, it will get thrown out on its own. It'll lose, you'll lose control. So as it gets wider, once again, you gotta keep your wheel speed down, right? So you gotta be very conscious of the speed, right? There we go. So I'm just round, keeping that rim round, right? So it's under control. So I come back and do that. So now you see the way I make this, I always establish something that looks pretty good, right? So it's not really the plate I want yet, but it's at a point where it's, it's something and I could stop here potentially. That means that it's probably working out. It probably on a good path. This is way too thick for what I want it to be. But you see that I've already established a pretty good looking something here, right? Does that make sense? And so what I'm gonna do is keep throwing it thinner, right? And then keep laying it down each time I go, 
right? And this part, once again, even, and I've already established what I think is a beautiful curve here, right? That's the start. So this part of that curve may not change that much. Up in here, a little bit higher, might I have to push it down some more. That makes sense. I've already started my turn up to the rim right there. And I don't have to worry about that collapsing because it's supported by this outside chunk of clay. So here we go. Wet it down again, wet it down inside and out. And then here, I'm gonna start pushing from here, from right about here. I'm gonna leave this part of the curve alone. I wanna push there. There we go. And I go out and then I start pushing back. Right, we're really going for it this time. So I have to slow down. Even there, I was I felt like I was going too fast. I got to take it easy on my pressure, right? And you see how that, that time I was being really aggressive and flaring it out more, right? There's always this funkiness that happens to the rim. So I always come back and kind of round the rim off. There are lots of little steps here, right? You notice that there's lots of fussing around. I do this because I don't, the way I teach is I don't want to teach you guys something new. I want you guys to be using the skills that you already have, right? Because there are lots of people that use their, when they're opening, like they push out this way or they do something, they use their elbow or something for different things. And you can make a plate really fast and you can become really good, but that requires a completely different technique, right? Than what we were learning before all right so i'm winning it down again and i'm just now i'm beginning to think about what else i need to do and i'm thinking about for me i'm thinking about this flat space right and then proportion for this and what i want this to be doing up here right so maybe i just need to clean it up because I'm trying to make some final decisions because I'm getting to the point, if I fold it down more, I can't really bring it back. It turns into a mess if you try to bring it out, right? Because clay loves to expand. It doesn't like coming, contracting, right? So I'm going to clean it up with this rib and just see what I have, right? Because all that goopy wet texture and all that is causing visual... It's creating like a visual noise there that's hard for me to overcome. So when I start cleaning that up, you see that I can, I have a better idea of where it starts, ends in this proportion to that. So it's feeling to me like this chunky part is too big for what I, proportionately for what I want. It has nothing to do with functionality, right? It has more to do with just aesthetically this flat space versus that space base doesn't feel good to me so maybe i just maybe if i lay it down more that that transition because as i lay it down right as i lay this flatter two-dimensionally this way right and this way this rim will take up more space visually right as i lay it down i'm pretty sure i'm still not going to like it because it's not that this space is too small it's that i feel that it's a little bit too big Right. So that's my feeling. So, you know, so when you're laying something down and you're getting close to flatness, right, you're getting close to horizontal, they, you, it's better if you leave the scooped up a little bit here like that for now. Why is that? It's because it doesn't want to collapse as much. It gives it some structural strength. Right. And then later when you're done, if you really need it to be flat, then you can flatten it out later. So here now, this is pretty good because you notice that as this gets wider, I am supported up to there. That's where the underneath clay is. So up to here, actually, I don't have to worry about it collapsing. It's just this part. So I forgot about that. But the drawback is this part here from this part down to there is harder to push down because it's clay underneath there. That makes sense. So above that, I got to take it easy because that clay, when I push even a little bit, wants to go whoop, wants to go flat right away. So here, I'm going to push that area down. So that may mean I need to work this area a little bit longer right and then make there we go so this is actually feeling okay now so I just feel all of a sudden I feel better about this <laughs> so here I'm feeling a lot better about this so I think it needs to be flattened out just maybe a touch more there we go All right, so there I'm going to do a couple things now. So this is getting pretty cool. I'm feeling actually better about it just for some reason, just been the, like the last minute or so. So now I'm going to take my finger and draw across because sometimes um, as a flat object, 
it's really hard for your eyes. It's much harder for your eyes to see three dimensionally, like what's going on. Cause if there's no shadow or anything, right. Cause it's easier to see. I call this, it's easier to see with your finger than it is with your eyes sometimes. So I can look at it and just draw my finger across and I could feel how the plate is going if it's wavy, right? So that feels pretty good and I'll go up here. Oh, so it's actually pretty good up to about there. So what's happening here? Maybe there's a slight something happening right here and there's definitely something weird happening there. So since the plate only could be pushed down, I'll just push down a little more. Right, and knowing that when I push down with this part of the rib down in here, I can push harder. And then when I'm up here, I gotta take it easy. If this part goes down too far, it's very difficult for me to bring, it's harder to bring back up. It's easier for me to push this area back down, right? So I'm just pushing, I'm making sure when I have this rib in here, I'm mainly, it almost feels like I'm torquing down this way, right? I'm pushing more on this, this heel part here because I know that's supported. And I'm really thinking now, getting close to done, I'm thinking about how this flat space transitions into there, right? You can have it as a sharp transition like it comes along and has a very tight radius or even a corner right where it's kind of sharp or one corner kind of comes in the rim i like it more when it's a nice smooth turn right so i use like the heel of one of these and i go down this way right into that corner and that will flip this rib around i'll use the same corner and i'll go out this way or i may go out this way with using that so those two corners meet won't go from down, let's just do it for real, right? And this corner now is down in that corner there, right? That round, I'm calling it a corner, but it's not really a corner, right? It's a thing. So you see how from here down to there, it's a beautiful turn. And then I'll come back with this one. Maybe I don't think about this this much. So maybe I'll try it from here, right? And use this corner and I'll go back into that corner from there. Then I let that corner run for a second. And so what I'm trying to do is create a beautiful transition from flat space to turning. For me, I want it to be a thing, but let's try it another way. You can make it much, no, it's hard to, it's hard for me to do to create. Let's just leave it like that. So here, this corner doesn't fit, but I can bend this corner. If I bend this down a little bit like that, I can make it fit a little bit. I don't know why I'm doing that that way. It just feels like the right thing to do. Yeah, go ahead. You st no, I, I would just, if I want to raise the lip up, I would just do that. So there's enough strength. Like I'm being very conservative on this. Like I could have laid this down much more, but I'm being super conservative. But so here I can raise that back up. There's enough strength I can. But for most of you, right, you like the, like it's, it's a number of different things. How wet is your clay? How stressed out is it, right? There's still some leeway for me to push this back down if I, or to, and to raise it back up. And actually, I think I like it better just a little bit raised there. All right, so now what are we gonna do is, I feel like, you know, hey, John, this is, okay, so it does. All right, we're gonna be done. All right, so now I'm gonna wet the rim because we haven't dealt with the rim, right, at all. So what are we gonna do? Right, the rim, if it's not round, you try to ignore the non-roundness because it's very easy to trim off because you want to trim it to round when you're done. So I haven't really touched the rim in a while, so I'm gonna re-wet it because it can be dry. If I need to cut it off, you cut it off like this, right? So here you come straight down from the top, right? Because you can't come down, it's difficult to come down this way. Another thing you could do is you can, like here, I'm just gonna cut it straight through at like a, let's just post through at like a 90 degree angle, right? I can also cut it off at an angle. I used to fool around and do this and expose an uh, angled surface one way or the other. I stopped doing that because I, I grew up a little bit more and my tastes have changed. So here we'll just cut it off. Even though I think this doesn't need to be cut off, it's still pretty round. 
right? So, but you just come in like this and just cut it off. And then you see that I'm supporting it slightly from the outside, because sometimes if you're on the edge of collapse, like very close, which some of you may, you need to support it underneath here, because you this is another, your fingers are another way you can see, feel what's going on. I still call it seeing, because you, you won't see it collapsing right away. How, why is that? Because, the collapsing is happening as a distance, right? It'll be falling away from you, right? And that's hard to see, right? Whether it's like this, like when it starts dropping, you don't see it right away. It's too late by the time you see it, but I'll feel it right away here with my finger, so my finger will get pushed down a little, right? So then I support it. I'm only pushing up a little bit, and then I start just pushing that needle tool in till I feel it. And then remember, you have to go all the way around once you get all the way through like that, and then we just cut that baby off and that comes off. Sometimes there's these little scrappy things of clay that get left behind, gotta deal with that. Sometimes also this clay on the rim is really wet, right? Really goopy and it's sometimes just good to get that off of there. All right, so now we're gonna wet this down again because we're gonna chamois it and round it off. This is pretty thick, but we're gonna leave it. Now, why am I going to leave it thick? Sometimes I like leaving it thick because when a viewer sees this plate, when a person sees it, this is their assessment for how much weight, how weighty it is. That's one of the things. So if it looks thick, they assume that the whole plate is thick, right? And that then it has some visual weight. And so when they pick it up, then they're expecting something heavy. Right? Just like a cinder block, if you try to pick up a cinder block or a bag of clay, you know what you're expecting from that weightiness or a brick, right? You know, and so um, you're always making those judgments, right? When you're about to pick something up. So if it looks heavy, then you can leave it as a heavy thing. And people aren't saying, wow, that's heavy, right? If it looks light, and then it's a little bit heavier than it should be visually, then people will always say it's kind of heavy, right? It's a psychological, does that make sense to everybody? So if it looks heavy, it, then it, when someone picks it up and it's heavy, they're like, oh yeah, it's just the way it should be, right? So we're always striving for lighter and thinner, but one thing you can do is if it isn't looking, if your pottery isn't turning out that way or whatever, you can make something heavy visually heavy and then if you just make it a little bit lighter than how it looks then people may not think your pots are heavy they may think your actually heavy pot feels kind of light to them right so it's a little bit psychological a mind game thing all right so i i did the rim and let's undercut this sucker so undercutting plates are a little bit funky and i don't know if i can get my camera all the way down there just Maybe not. Uh, we'll put it over here. Sorry for the jiggling around. Give me a second. All right, so how do we undercut this guy? This space oftentimes is super tight, right? You see, I don't have much space to really get my tool in here. I could barely see it. So don't worry about removing a lot of clay. Just take the tip of this guy and just push it under like this to create the groove. But it's critical that you do that. I don't even know if you guys can see that. Can you guys even see that? So I didn't really cut a chunk off like we do with cups because you can get in there with a cup and do the, the first cut, right? And then do the cut at the wheel and remove that chunk. But you need to do that because the wire tool, if you don't do that, that wire tool will kick up the minute you hit the plate, right? And then it'll wire a much bigger chunk off. You want to undercut that somehow so the wire tool goes underneath. So this is big enough. I got to remove the splash fan now to get the wire tool in there. And this is the one thing that you can do to really mess that up is that you got to make sure your wire is tight, right? When you do this and you got to make sure you're kind of holding it downward. So you see how the wire is bigger than the wheel head, right? So I bring it in like that. I make sure it's seated in the right place because I've tried to cut off and I'm actually going underneath the bat like I am right there. So you got to make sure you're on top of the bat, but now you'll notice that I'm pulling so now let's go. You can see from the top down view, I'm off the side of the wheel. I want to make sure when I'm holding this wire, I'm pulling down, I'm below, my hands are below the wheel, right? Because if you even wander up a little bit, you're going to slice through the bottom, right? And so here I got to make sure I'm below the wheel head. I'm pulling it tight. I go slowly rotation, 
right? And I'm pulling it tight and you don't have to go fast, right? You just go through like that all the way through like that. Now, I leave it now. If I like, realize that, oh, I forgot to do something, I could come back and rib again. But if I do that, I definitely need to wire it again because that clay will get reattached. It is critical that you wire these because even between now and leather hard, when I trim it, you'll notice the amount of shrinkage. There's just, it needs to shrink like an inch or more, right? In between now and when it's, finished and comes out of the glaze fire, right? It's gonna shrink more than an inch. So a lot of that happens between now and leather hard and leather hard to bone dry, right? So always wire it, right? And then, um, yeah. And then be careful when you're moving this around. You guys have any questions about that? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Oh, so yes, yeah, so you're talking about plaster bats. So I have a plaster bat. So this is plastic, right? So plastic is non-porous. The plastic is not absorbing any water. So we'll talk about a little bit about that next time because the bottom of this isn't gonna dry. So some things that are critical is drying speed, right? That you don't want one part of this plate as much as possible to dry faster than the other. Unlike a cup, like you can just leave a cup out. You can even put it, force dry it a little bit and you can be ready to trim in the afternoon, especially in summer or something. You can put a, these, I never try to force dry my plates because the, the dynamics of shrinking and all that are all magnified here, right? And the clay that we're using, which is a lot like B-Mix, is not really designed for big things or wide things. Like we're pushing, we're starting to get to the edge of, if I were making plates for a living, like I would not use this clay or I'd ask for a special blend that had more grog or sand in it to kind of limit the cracking and stuff because the dynamics of what this clay needs to go through in shrinkage is a, is a lot for one piece of clay. So yes, but plaster bats, when you put it on, the plaster is porous, right? And the plaster bats generally you use need to be dry. You slap it on. That plaster is constantly sucking out water. Even now it would be sucking out water. So then the bottom dries as the top is drying as well. So then they do, it does pop off on its own. You do not wire those off. And so at home, I have a whole set of plaster, big plaster, small plaster bats. Uh, why don't we have them here in the studio is because they require some maintenance meaning that you have to take care of them if you drop them they'll shatter if you hit them hard they'll break and then if you get plaster in your clay buckets that's a bad 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 thing because plaster causes the finished clay product to to blow out right it'll crack your finish so you may get this plate you glaze everything looks good and two months later a chunk may just fall off because if the plaster gets mixed into your clay, it's bad news. So um, in general, that's why we don't use them because they just don't last, especially if you don't take care of them, right? And so the one thing that we always have in the studio is everything's a little bit bomb proof, right? It doesn't matter if we drop these, drop the bats we have, right? They're either wood or plastic. And so what am I gonna do with this? I'm gonna leave this open all day today. I'll keep checking on it. And then what we'll do is when it gets leather hard, I'm gonna get it off and flip it over. Why is that? It's because the bottom is just stuck against um, plastic. So the bottom middle, especially right below here where my finger is, isn't drying out at all. So I need to flip it over to help even out the drying. What dries first, of course, is the rim. The rims have a tendency to pop up a little to, and it becomes more bowly just through the natural process. But we'll talk a little bit more about that next class. Um, any, any other questions? Yes, go. Popping up, which is, it's a little water. Yeah, not maybe, not necessarily. Yeah, I mean, there's something you could do. Yeah, so one thing you can do is try to keep the rim from doing. I just plan for it to pop up some, right? So this is going to end up a little steeper, but I think for this sort of plate, it doesn't matter, right? Yes, you could try that. There's all sorts of things people try to do. But since this dries out first, it's, you can never just push it back down, right? Because it'll just crack along the rim. You get these cracks going in. Any other questions? You have one? All right, so plates, make plates, make like four of them, I like to say. Doesn't have to be this big. This is a five pounder, right? You can make like a three pound plate or something to start with to try it. Good.